So any like downtime, I can always just cut some pieces out. It's all good. You don't have to be funny every single moment of the time. It's all good. Oh, thank goodness. Well, that's you good, because so, I'm not funny. Stressed, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Honestly. <laughs> Basic, fine, it's fine. Just be yourself. Enjoy, have but fun. Amigo, the people on YouTube are going to make fun of me if I'm not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this. Hype. So, you can see this, right? Yeah. Excellent. Doing the four players. We're totally doing the first turn a classic. We're gonna do a short game so that we can uh, make sure it's not that long. Uh, I'll be a narrator just for the shits and giggles. So, ah, spooky high school, the sweetest years of our lives. Back then we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. All right, so who wants to start? Don't jump I will. Once. Okay. <laughs> I'll be the Frankenstein girl. Yeah, okay, what what name do you want? Uh, Candle is fine. You sure? You can make anything you yeah. need that, right? Okay. Mm, yeah, that's fine. All right. Okay, I can spell honestly. Okay, there you go. She? Okay. Who's next? Did you just assume my gender, amigo? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> my bad. Okay, okay. Oh, I can't go back into this if I wanted to. Lame. Unlucky. <laughs> Unlucky. I guess you're stuck with she. <laughs> Who's hey, next? Do you want to be player two or player three? Uh, I can. I don't care. Alright, I'll be player two then. I just don't. I'll be the, uh... Fire check, yeah. Ooh. Alright, Miss Rose. I'm just trying to think of a good name for her. Hmm. I mean, I would say candle, because you know. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, uh, if you we were both candle, that would be funny. Up, up. Candle one, candle two. What's up? Um candle, but then it's like spelled like super off. Like it's like Numbers like and digits. <laughs> yeah, what, like actually Kendall though. That would be hilarious. <laughs> oh, uh, should I do that? Sure. Huh. Like, you should do it. You should do Kendall, but like kindling fire, you know? Oh, Kendall. Yeah, that is Kendall. Like, Kindle. Oh, Kindle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kindle. So, okay, I. Uh, where's the other fox? Yeah. I, what I, if we all just made our names? I'm a she. Thank you. <laughs> all right, I, I I figured out that just in case. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> all right, basic. Which one do you want to be? Uh, I think I was the green one last time. I'll just do that again. Yeah, sure. I also I also want to make my name so very <laughs> candle now. I think that would be really funny. <laughs> <laughs> you all could right. be Ken doll or something. Ken doll. Yeah. Oh, there wait, we go. I, I like oh. that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Ken doll? I love it. Ken, yeah, can you do a spit bag? Like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> are you are you he, she, or they? He, he, he. Okay, he, he. Alright. <laughs> I guess I'll be last. Um, okay, just a second. Mm. How would I do this? Hmm. Hmm. I feel like it'd be funny if your name was just something like Steve or Dave. Like, we all have very similar names. And then it's just like, Steve. And it's like, what? I'm, I'm Jerry. Jerry. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Fucking <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> That's good. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Two weeks were left. And as we fantasized about our dreams, prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was cute as she was genocidal. Damon LaVey, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Scott. <laughs> You're not good for us. Scott Howell, 21, a werewolf athlete who com compensated 
for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Liam de Leoncourt. 4XX, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hid that he was truly a lovable dork. Polly Geist, 22, a, partly, a party ghost, pardon me, with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. And Vera Oberlin, 23, a mean self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear, it had to be one of them, but who? We only had two weeks to choose from our prom date, and even more daunting, we had two weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But uh, I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever! All minds are rotten, but they're rotten so many different ways. Worry no more, we're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Problem's stupidest pop quiz ever will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into characteristic stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Question 1. You build a 100-foot statue commemorating an event so that in 1,000 years, archaeologists can learn something about the people of our time. What does the statue represent? Would you like me to read them out loud? Hmm. No, I think I got them. Uh, probably the second one sounds the most exciting. Okay, so your least favorite political figure being devoured by rabid rhinoceri, which are also covered in badass tattoos. Alright, what about you, Rose? So, like, I would totally go with the glorious instant when your friend stopped you from texting embarrassing stuff to your ex while hella drunk. Hell yeah! <laughs> Uh, I was gonna say the same thing. Oh, you same bottom one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, since I'm Jerry, I'm gonna fucking do the first one. So, that mind-blowing twist in your favorite TV show that clearly changed the life of everyone forever, unlike all that boring stuff they show on the news. A. So fun. So creative, so bold. <laughs> it's your chance to fix global warming. Go ahead. Probably the first one. So global warming isn't real, I invented it, and now science is claiming authorship because science is a lame copycat with no original ideas. Done. Yeah. I'm trying to get a specific person, and I think that'll be, the, that, I think that'll be their answer. Solid metagaming, I love it. I, I do believe in global warming. <laughs> I think okay. it's real. Okay, okay. I'm glad you, ha you wanted to clarify that. <laughs> Just making sure everybody knows. Got it, got it. Rose, what you think? So, like, because my name is Kindle, I definitely have to be the last one where we're gonna have a party on the sun. Nice. <laughs> so it's time to be a real hero. Yeah, I will lead a mission to the sun in order to invite the sun to the party of its life. We'll have so many hilarious misadventures that the sun will eventually become cooler. Alright, basic, what up? Nah, the world's doomed, bro. Despair. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going with, nah, the world is doomed, but I'll start investing in ships and starting a profitable business for the soon to be covered by Water World. Alright, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. I kind of like the party though, not gonna lie. Hey, party yeah. at the end of the world? Yeah. The world will end tomorrow. What will you do today? Hmm. It's all. Uh, good, I'll go with. It's okay, we invented the apocalypse to take care of the overpopulation of commoners. Excellent. What about you, Rose? So, like, I totally party as if there's no tomorrow, so who cares? Alright, so... This one over here. Yeah. Yep, Kendall, you better not be trying to metagame who I think you're trying to metagame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say the we'll same thing see. here, but... I want to say the same thing she did. It's so, okay, we invented the apocalypse to take care of the overpopulation of commoners. Okay, um... <laughs> I'm going to say... Hmm, hmm... I... What one would I do? I'm I good... actually think I take the wrong answer, so... I'm going to say... You always tell you the world's ending, I'll profit in all of people's hysteria. Yeah. Fuck me. Yeah. Easy, easy clap. Easy clap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to go for the hipster vampire. Oh really? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, I should have told you to do level one. All right, so Kendall, what's up? Hmm, let's go to the library first. All right, library it is. The day you spend some time on the library's PCs, mining some bitcoins... Actual nerd, wow. <laughs> I'm hoping I run into the hipster vampire here. <laughs> this is supposed to have something to do with selling algorithms and the rise of cur cryptocurrency. But you guess that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it really works. Anyway, you gain two bitcoins, which is equal to two, thou uh, two million dollars. I can count. Which, unfortunately, is equal to two <laughs> monster dollars, so uh, two money. Nice. Okay, okay. Afterwards, Miranda summons you. No. Okay. Looks like I'm fighting with a uh, basic here on this one. Yeah, I think it's you two are duking it out. It feels weird to be summoned, but you comply. You can resist her mermen goons. Who would like to voice uh, Miranda? Out of our dear ladies. Well, if Kendall's going for her, I should probably voice her. Oh, that's perfect. That probably makes sense. That makes sense. Because if you have to talk to yourself, that seems kind of weird. <laughs> I'm not <honest. laughs> True, true. Huh, what kind of voice do we think she has, though? Like, I'm already doing that weird kind of one for her. Uh, last time? Yeah. I, I, I uh, don't Kendall, think Potato really did a voice for Oh, yeah. Potato did do this one, didn't yeah, she? Yeah. Yeah, right, I don't think right. she had a voice, she just talked normally. I got this. Okay, okay. Right, okay, my voice isn't gonna be that good for it, but... That's fine. Fun. Thank you for coming, my dear. I have finally decided to trust you with my most important aspiration. I love it. I am destined to be the queen of prom! The royal ascension is nigh. We must prepare. Most of my competition is naive. They foolishly assume that the prom queen is purely a ceremonial title. Except Ursula Jr. She's proving to be quite a worthy rival. I respect that. Which is why we <clears throat> must destroy her reputation immediately. Any thoughts? I love her look, by the way. <laughs> Okay. Let's convince everyone that she likes humans. Are you sure you don't want the fart joke? Okay, I guess we'll be <laughs> Now I'm second guessing myself. <laughs> well, again, don't forget, like, whatever you choose is all your stats, right? So. That's true. So that might be Actually, smart. Actually, no, no, no. Let's go with fart joke. Let's go with it. Uh, are you sure? That, that might be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay, wait, wait. Which one do you want? Fart joke. Okay. <laughs> oh no. Oh, oh, fart so joke? As in a humorous jape involving the sound yeah. of gas escaping from a. from a butt? <laughs> Do you think this is a game? Um, technically it is. Hmm. <laughs> prom queen is an important title. My mother is prom queen. My father was both prom king and prom queen. Dang. I love it. I will not soil my family's legacy by condoning a fart joke in my name. You should try it, though. You would laugh at the word soil, <laughs> but apparently this is no laughing matter. You lose two boldness and one fun. Feels bad. Feels bad. Alright, so, what are you saying, Rose? So, like, I'm definitely gonna go outdoors. I- Oh shit, look at that. The day during recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea that escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort fabric reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain two fun. Damn, your fun stat's are really high, actually. <laughs> You've just been ready to leave when you get a text from Polly. Hey, BB, let's party. How could you refuse such a formal missive? You track her down immediately. Oh, Kendall, I think this is you. Hey, you got my text. That's good, because I need some help brainstorming. I'm going to a party tonight, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be lame, and that needs to change. See, it's a costume party. You know, where everyone dresses up as their favorite humans? I'm going as a sexy tax attorney. <laughs> But I'm not sure even the sexiest tax attorney can rescue this party from the depths of lame 
lamitude. Yeah. So, got any ideas to help spice things up? Oh, you've got some ideas, and they are the spiciest. Alright, so which one are you gonna go for? So, like, I'm gonna go as a sexy tax evader. Oh! I see that. Oh no! Later that night, you're hanging out at the party, waiting for Polly, wearing a shirt that says, I have unpaid taxes. When suddenly you hear a booming voice from the door, HALT! TAX EVADER! You turn around, expecting to see Polly for sexy vest and pocket calculator. But it's actually a grizzled Tyrannosaurus in the business suit from the Department of Monstrous Revenue. <laughs> As you flee the scene, oh, you no. see Polly about to put on a lab coat and goggles. Hey, why are you running? Why are you wearing that shirt? Oh! Did you think I was actually gonna be a sexy tax attorney? I was super high when I said that. I'm actually just a sexy chemist. You're gonna need a regular chemist after the beating of that Tyrannosaur gives you. You lose two money and one bullet. Alright. Um, what up? Let's hit the auditorium. Okay. That day, while rehearsing for the class play, it is though the muses themselves have descended to give you a fingertip blowjob. Your performance is intense and inspiring. It'll be remembered for generations, which is pretty rad by high school play standards. You gain two plus creativity. Sigh. Woe is me. Sigh. Could Miranda <laughs> possibly doing this because she wants your attention? Only one way to find out. <laughs> oh, hello. I didn't see you there, as I was standing here, suffering gallantly in silence. She did, and she wasn't, but okay. I had the most tragic injustice befall me earlier this morning. I was rejected from our school's water polo team. They claimed I was mistaken about how polo is conducted underwater. Excuse me, but I was raised underwater. How is one even supposed to play water polo without a heavy, heavily armored seahorse as a mom? How, I ask you? <laughs> Perhaps I offended them when I implied that they were too impoverished to afford sea steeds. If so, why would I love to make reparations? But it may be too soon for me to show my face. Would you be so kind as to take them the gift of this omelette to begin the healing? I am told that peasants consider eggs to be a delicacy. Um, obviously. And what would make the gesture even better is the personal touch of... Alright. What do you think, man? Hmm... I'll go with the first one. Okay, so toppings, caviar. No, I feel eel. like I'm getting. I feel like I'm getting baited here. You think so? You think so? Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, good. Do it. Just do it. All right, all right. Then don't forget this was a present from the Mer Princess. Oh, creative! You got it. <laughs> Easy, dude. Why no. yes, of course. Chocolate covered sand crabs, the food of my people. <laughs> Nothing says fit for a mermaid princess like a breakfast of seafood. As we say in my kingdom, wake up and smell the slowly rotting whale carcass, and then come home and have a bite before we head off to the day's executions. I'm sure you have a similar saying here. Cute face. Prude. <laughs> Thank you so much for your service, my hero, and Godspeed to you and your seafood-filled omelet. And make sure to take lots of pictures of them eating the eggs so we can all remember how generous I was. Sweet! I mean, less sweet than that you now have to carry eggs filled with dead fish across campus to the water polos club headquarters. But did you see how happy Miranda looked? Happy as a clam who wasn't backed into an omelette. You gain two charm and one creativity. Hey, it's my turn, Jerry. All right. I right, go class, gym, or the bathrooms. All right, what's my stats again? Um, kind of want to go to bathrooms. Classic Jerry. Damn right. Speak <laughs> 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 class to go to the bathrooms. Look, I have IBS, okay? 
<laughs> that day you skip class and you just hang out in the bathrooms just because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn. By skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms, you give zero shits, but you gain two boulders. <laughs> As you walk down the hallway trying to beat a level of bone crush on your phone, you run smack into Vera, also engrossed in her phone. Basic, you're gonna be her. Oh, uh, I am? Alright. You totally are. Oh, goodness. Okay. Um. Alright, I got this. Okay. Sure! Feel free to read over my shoulder. You wouldn't understand the charts anyway. Miranda's been mouthing off about being a princess again, as if that's so amazing. She's a princess underwater. You know what's underwater? Sea slugs and fish shit. You know what's not underwater? This school? Why should birthright matter when there are so many other factors that determine a person's worth? Their beauty, their cruelty, their business sense, and using all these factors, I've dis divided the school into cools and uncools. Now, I just need to find a way to reinforce the superiority of the cools over the uncools. Okay, so either I'd go with the uncool students should have to carry cool students from class to class on chases? Chases? What is that word? Chassis? Um, chassis? Yeah, okay, fair. Rotting squid should be thrown at the uncool students to remind them how uncool they are. Um, I think either one could be fi fine for me, but maybe that one. Yes! <laughs> it's true, the uncool students should really start taking responsibility for being the worst. And Miranda uses fear-mongering tactics all the time. She shouldn't have a stranglehold on that. So to speak. And maybe I could throw squid at them and then sell a squid repellent. That way I could profit off their humiliation. By the end of the week, most students have at least a black eye or eight, some students have spiders, from being bombarded with squid. Vera, meanwhile, have created a thriving startup based on the distribution of squid repellent. Turns out, dead squid being used as projectiles aren't really repelled by scent. But also turns out that the student body at the school is really, really gullible. Bear gains money and status, and you gain two money as royalties for your idea and one smarts. Alright. Everybody chooses an object. Say your choice out loud to the rest of the players before clicking. Um... Uh... Hmm. Is it just a random object, or is there like yeah. a prompt? Yeah. No, oh, hmm. so there will be a prompt that it, it relates to later, but like, it's to decide who goes first. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember this from last time. Yeah, so I always got last because I would pick something, and then it was like really bad. But all right, I'm gonna do it before all of you. I choose candles. Give all right, one. all right, <laughs> all right. Um, I have. I choose a baseball bat. All right. I'll pick a unicycle. Okay, I will pick a vibrating chair. Player order is decided based on how easy it would be to convince people that you're a wizard if you traveled oh back in time gosh, to the Middle dude. Ages with the only <laughs> oh object. Gosh, All right, I got last place, it's fine. Me, okay, so I think it'd probably be me with a uh, vibrating yeah. chair. Yeah, with a vibrating chair. Yeah. And then what did you say yours was? A unicycle? Yeah, I think that Yeah, one, I think oh, unicycle, and second. then baseball bat, and then me last. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. That's that's fair. That's fair. Can you imagine Rose trying to convince people in the past that candles were a <laughs> new invention? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would she be like, a or something. <laughs> She'd be like, what? come on, come all! I can create light! <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, oh shit, I get to pick first. Now, I'm gonna pick this one because I love- oh wait, no, I can't, because I know Rose is after Polly. I'll do this one. Aw, so kind. That's take... really nice. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You take your seat beside, arguably, the two coolest monsters that all speak a high. Here's hoping you can keep up with them. I guess I'll do this guy's voice. Sure. Uh, 
Vera, are you eating manticore steaks again? Yes, and it's delicious. <laughs> Don't you know the amount of cruelty involved in the mainstream meat production industry? Yes, and it's delicious. <laughs> Besides, Liam, you're a vampire. Don't you only consume things that are dead? Well, yes, I suppose. But it's always ethically sourced, organic, three range, and human. The human population is out of control, and eating them is the most environmentally responsible thing to do. Listen, Liam, I happen to have a personal feud with every single animal I eat. I make sure to meet all of them first and ensure I'm devouring only the ones I hate the most. It makes it extra tasty. Well then, surely you can inflict such pain without going through the cruel meat industry and supporting factory farming. Isn't home cruelty better anyway? You may actually have a point there. And if I get my hand in the pot, I can inflict even more effective and specific pain. And I bet there's a way to make money off this, too. Hang on! Somehow I ended up arguing against my own interests here! Liam! Do you want to find innovative and creative ways to move society forward, or do you want to oppose cruelty like every other weak mainstream loser? You can actually hear Liam's brain shaking as he struggles between his desire to be perceived as ethical and his desire to be perceived as creative. Maybe you can step in and help out. Okay, so either I go with this one. The animals you kill may lose their lives, but what about their afterlives? Instead of letting their spirits go and waste as the byproduct of the meat industry, let's serve their eternal souls as a side dish. Or Liam, animals are already suffering from ignorance. If Vera wanted to increase their pain, the best we can do is to teach them the concept of death so they really fear their fate. Let's educate cattle on metaphysics. Ah, oh. I feel like the bottom was creativity and then th that one might be fun. Hmm. I'm thinking this one down here. Oh, shit. No! <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't condone... A <laughs> Wait, sorry. Well, I can't condone animal cruelty, but I wholeheartedly support animal education. I do like animals, and their illiteracy is my fourth least favorite thing about them. Right between their poor taste and fashion and simplistic views on German cinema. Is that the worst idea you've ever had? Although, face it, Jerry, you are known for having pretty terrible ideas about 50% of the time. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> face it, Jerry. I don't really see building an empire out of private schools for cattle, but with my business acumen, I guess it's possible. And I can rest secure in the knowledge that I'm solving the bovine education crisis. Helping Liam grows... Eh. Helping Liam helps cows is like helping you help Liam choose you to go to the prom with. Or something. Alright, guys. Okay. It's my turn to cockblock basic here and go <laughs> with the table. Miranda. Alright. Nope, I'm not upset. I'm not upset. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nope. nope. You come Don't upon Damien. Chair. I will watch from a distance. <laughs> <laughs> you just see him on like the furthest table in the cafeteria just scowling and just dead. Just crying. <laughs> <Well>, crying. <laughs> <laughs> Pouting. Oh. You come across Damien sneering at Miranda's elaborate silverware and spread while her eating serfs chow down obediently at a neighboring table. Um, anyone want to be Damien, or...? I think you were in last time. You did a pretty good job. Are you sure? Okay. Okay. I go for it. Alright. I still don't get why you collect all these stupid forks and spoons and shit. I mean, even the knives don't really look that deadly. Silly boy, this silverware is not for killing. Things can be for stuff other than killing? That's lame as hell. It's basically useless. I mean... You don't even eat! Your serfs do it for you! Well, of course they do! But they're not using any of your silverware! Naturally they aren't! Serfs must eat with their hands, as befits the lower classes! True say. So you're <laughs> saying a silverware collection has no practical purpose? Things have practical purpose? 
These two could go round and round like this forever, unless you say something to resolve their dispute. I feel like you, mm. you know which one you're probably gonna go for. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go of Lay Off Miranda Damien. <laughs> okay, so Lay Off Miranda Damien, what about your collection of exotic corpses? There we go. <laughs> Let's go. Well done. That's different. Thank you. Thank you. Those corpses are useful. Useful for what? For, for, holding down important documents. What important documents? Documents about very important. Uh, fine. I guess I don't have stupid corpses for anything. I just smack. Stack them in the shed and occasionally dress them up in silly little costumes. There, you happy? Extremely. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting excited about that. Rose, damn, bro. <laughs> Whatever. I'm gonna go play with my corpses. You stay behind with Miranda to admire her collection. Even she teaches you how to use the romance fork smooth. All right, whatever, dude. Uh, <laughs> well, we've decided as a group to leave the middle table open, so Aww, look I'll at you go guys. top left. I'll go top left. Oh, this boy. Yep. All right. You're just trying to enjoy a meal in peace when space untwists itself to reveal the interdimensional prince. Do you want to voice this, or shall I? Uh, me? I can voice him. Okay. Most glorious hero, thank the squid star I found you. I've been confounded by the most fiendish riddle. I feel like Basic has been waiting his whole life to do this voice. <laughs> right? He's so he's fitted for this. A riddle that has vexed me for days, nay, weeks. The riddle of... How to change the ringtone on my new smartphone. This interface is more torturous than my palace labyrinth. For real? You grab the prince's phone and change his ringtone to butts, 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 all about those butts by the booty bros. My hero, what seems difficult to me is trivial to you, and you even guessed which ringtone I desired, a true all-time classic from the sixth dimension. There's only one way I can repay you, by bestowing upon you a superpower of your choice. I can do that. I'm the prince of another dimension. I can do all kinds of crazy things you don't know about. All kinds of crazy things besides use his phone, apparently. And he really only gives you two superpower options. If you do not <laughs> pick that one, I will be- Option two, option two. <laughs> if you didn't pick that one, I would be <laughs> so <laughs> fucking upset. We take those, we take those. Oh I yes. Don't lie, <laughs> oh yes, the choice of a true gentle monster. With a wave of his magic way. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> the prince imbues your ass with boundless work ethic. By the day, your ass amazes your classmates and creepy teachers. By night, it does your homework for you. All that work makes your buns super tight. You gain four charms. No! Moran's gonna leave me for the ass that doesn't quit. Damn! Damn. Damn. My hips don't love Boom. <laughs> Look at Basic just being all cheeky here. Literally. Yeah, I see what you did there. Hey, finger guns. Alright. Watch your so I'm gonna go for the middle table, thank you. Alright, of course, of course. You approach Scott and Polly's table to find them crouched behind a pile of jelly desserts, plotting. Oh, I have to be the werewolf, right? Of course. Of course. Thank <laughs> bros if you're here, bro! Come on, join our huddle! Maybe you're curious about our huge pile of jelly jam, gelatinous desert dessert cups. Well, wonder no more. We're going for the jelly prize. Yeah, we're gonna win it. If we collect the foil cover of 100 jelly desserts, we will be the lucky winners of... One free jelly dessert? Ah! <laughs> Right now we're stuck. We've only got 99. That means we need, we need... One more, Scott. We need one more. We need one more! 
Yay! You give him your jelly dessert, but you already threw it at the bird person you hate. Guess you gotta make a choice. Alright. Hmm. What do you think, Rose? So, like, I think both of these are really hard to decide between. Like, hmm. Don't forget, you're gonna try to get uh, Polly's, I believe, right? So, think what yeah. would be hers. So, I feel like I should do the first one and steal the final jelly dessert. Alright. Hey, there you go. But isn't stealing wrong? No, Scott. That's a myth. Like hangovers and the afterlife. But... If the afterlife isn't real, why are you a ghost? There's no time for metaphysics, Scott. We've got a heist to plan. No! Coach says stealing is wrong! Un unless you're stealing a ball, or, or a base, or, or victory from the jaws of defeat. Actually, it seems like sports is mostly about stealing. Well, that settles it! Time for stealing. One fake bus, one real wo woolly mammoth, and a brutal running gun battle later, you finally secure one illicit jelly cup, which you turn in along with your 99 other jelly cups for one free jelly cup. Scott is too upset by all the violence, so you split your free jelly cup with Polly. Worth it.